Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to another film review on Coach Cove's B-Ball Breakdowns. As always, I am Coach Cove. Today we got a couple more games to look at. If you've been to the channel before, you know how it works. Uh, we take a look at the last couple of minutes of a couple close college basketball games. As we get closer to the tournament, I'm going to start calling out some of the stats that I feel are relevant to the teams competing in the games that we break down. Um, this first game we got Kentucky versus Mississippi State. Coming in, Kentucky was tied for fourth in the SEC with Auburn. They, uh, they're they part of the last four in in Joe Lenardi's current bracket. Um, and they're scheduled in his bracket to play a play-in game versus UNC, which I think would be a great way to determine who should get in at the last 11 spot there. They shoot 36% from the three-point line, 69% from the free throw. They average 11.4 turnovers, 16 assists, and 38 rebounds per game. They're led by Oscar Shibwe, number 34. And, um, well, they got a couple guys. Antonio Reeves is number 12. He shoots it, shoots it well from the arc. Mississippi State's the other team we got in this one. They came in favored by three points. The over-under was 128.5, and, and Kentucky was plus 130 to win it. They fell to 11th in the SEC after losing eight of their first nine games in the conference, but they've won, they are on a five-game win streak coming into this one. Um, they're led by Tolu Smith, who averages 14 and eight. He's number one in white, as well as number three, uh, Shaq Moore. They average 28% from the behind the three-point line, 63% from the free throw line, 12 and a half turnovers a game, 16 assists, and 37 rebounds per game. So let's just get right into this film review. We got a close one here late. Shaq Moore's got it up top on this possession. He uh, he gets a little ball screen here from number ten, Deshaun Davis, and just floats it right up over, right up over Shibwe, who's got to step up and help off Smith. You can see Shibwe, the help comes, and the Smith is obviously open here under the block. But Tolu Smith does a good job of going off two feet, just about. It's always better to go off two feet on a layup look like that because you just have more control and you have more of a chance to get a foul call rather than just going up off one foot. It's a stronger take. This one's going to go into Livingston right here, number 24. He's a freshman, and he goes right at the junior, uh, Shaq Moore. Shaq Moore just elevates and stuffs it, though. So Mississippi State's got this transition look, but they end up pulling out of it. Moore gets it in really deep here, but you can see he he nearly loses his dribble in the process. He's got it real low. He almost loses it. Um, he ends up picking it up in a really bad spot, and he's stuck now. So he's looking to kick it out, and Wallace is there. I'm sorry, that's Livingston, number 24. Livingston makes a great play on the defensive end to get a steal, and it turns into a foul, so Kentucky's going back to the line. Livingston goes two for two, so Mississippi State's going to bring it back down here. This one's, they're looking into Tolu the whole time. Tolu's Smith number here, number, right here, number one. It's a good entry. It gets it there, at least. And the double comes almost immediately. Livingston on the backside is going to double Tolu Smith, who's been eating him up all day down low. So you'll see the amount of gravity that uh, Tolu Smith attracts here in the low block position. He's a dangerous man with his back to the hoop. So he gets it back to the hoop again, and that time... 22 right here. He just gets caught napping. He gets caught watching the ball, trying to help a little bit too much on Shibwe, who's playing Smith, and he's not paying attention to his man. It's a great pass there from Tolu Smith, and Matthews hammers it. So Kentucky loves to run this box sort of set. You'll see Calipari nearly at the three-point line. He's making this call. Um, they run it here a lot late. So you will see on the next possession, uh, the dribble drive goes the opposite way, but each time it's going away from to Shibwe. So Wallace has got it right here. They get in their box set and Wallace is going off a sort of screen look away from to Shibwe. These two guys on the bottom here are coming up to set a fake lob look, but it's actually for Toppin who slipped on this ball screen. Toppin sets this initial screen, but he sees that Wallace pretty much already has his man beat by the time the contact point arrives. So he slips right out of it and then just cuts right down the base, the midline, I'm sorry, for the lob. So it's almost a fake lob on that double down screen for Toshibwe into a lob for top, and we'll just see it develop one more time. It's just a slip and cut right down the midline. Pass was on time and in the right spot. Good pass. Kentucky takes a six-point lead here late. Mississippi State, they're really desperate for a bucket on this possession. But we'll see that the ball starts to get sticky here after this inbound. Kansas keeps really good ball pressure for most of the possession. 
We'll see Wallace get up in the grill of Shaq Moore right here. And Moore, again, he picks up his dribble in a bad spot on the left wing right here. So he now he's stuck again. Um, we end up getting Tolu Smith on basically a handoff right here. And he gets in deep just because Toshibwe goes the long way around. He follows this handoff, and now he's beat. And Tolu Smith, he's 6'11", uh, big guy who plays the forward almost like a guard does. And he's going to be difficult to defend here later on in the season. If Shaq Moore and Tolu Smith, that's the reason why Mississippi State can be so dangerous. If those two are on their game on any given night, they're going to be tough to beat. So on this Kentucky possession, we're looking to get to Shibway a touchdown low. They, they kind of cut it off, but it's the same box set. We got two up and two down. Again, we're going away from Toshibwe. The double screen comes, and Toshibwe just cuts to the ball side. So we get a post entry right here, and it's just a respot up and shoot. And I don't love this shot. Um, it's not a bad look, it's, but it's really early in the shot clock. You, you, need, a, you need a bucket on this possession because if you're, you have an empty trip, Mississippi State has a chance to make it a one-possession game right on the other end with a, with a quick score. So you really need a bucket, and with 18 seconds, this just isn't a great look. But we get bailed out, and it goes off the foot right here of Jeffries. On the inbound, we keep ball pressure, and the help comes from far. The double team comes quick, and it's without hesitation, so he forces 12 to pick it up. But Mississippi State, it's out on Mississippi State, so Kentucky keeps it. It goes out of bounds on Mississippi State. Again, they just can't corral this loose ball. So, Kentucky's going to have it with two seconds on the shot clock. And it's good defense by, by Mississippi State not to allow anything near the rim. Force a tough look for Toshiwe. And uh, get the ball back. with Now a chance to cut it to one possession. So again, it's Tolu Smith and Shaq Moore. Like I said, this ball screen action, it's just Moore going right to the rack and taking what he's given. Pull it up and hit it. So the switch comes. So Smith is going to have a position. He's going to be in position to rebound anyways. And yeah, so they cut it to the one possession game. And again, uh, the ball starts to get sticky here for Kentucky now. They're under pressure late in this one on the road, trying to come away with a win, so... It gets real sticky here. Wallace pretty much keeps the whole possession. It's the same box set. They're getting into it right now. It goes away from Tashiwe. They want to wait an extra second here. Calipari lets them know when it's time to go. So the screen comes. And it's the same look that was just a couple possessions ago for Toppin on the lob. Doesn't develop correctly that time. And now Wallace is forced to drive it. He picks up his dribble and is stuck at this point. He gets away with the travel as well right here. Gets away with a travel, kicks it out. It's a deep three for Reeves, but we get an offensive rebound. It's a huge rebound here for Livingston. You see, definitely iffy right here. The right foot lands, and it's hard to tell if it drags at all. But he did still have the pivot on the on the um, kick out. The coach is not happy. <laughs> Chris Livingston, the freshman, number 24 for Kentucky, with two big free throws here late to get, put him up by two possessions. Mississippi State's uh, down bad now. They uh, are very limited in what they can do on these last couple of possessions. Kentucky fouls and sends uh, turns into a bit of a free throw contest here. That's Eric Reed Jr. with two free throws to cut it back to two-point game. They have to foul immediately. They just get it into Tashibwe, who can catch the ball over pretty much anyone. But he misses one at the line, so Mississippi State's going to have a chance regardless. It's a three-point game. Kentucky has the option to foul. You can see Calipari actually makes the call. He wants the foul. Um, foul on the catch is the best way to do it. And that's exactly what happens. Good foul right there from Jacob Toppin. Foul on the catch. Don't let him even turn to take a look at the rim. Two big free throws there, back to one-point game. So we got to foul immediately again, and we'll see. It just goes right into Toshibwe again, who can, like I said, pretty much catch it over just about anyone. 
but he can't always make his free throws, so he's the right guy to foul here for Mississippi State. Send him down to the line. He hits the front end. Mississippi State's got no timeouts. He hits them both that time, so two big ones there. Kentucky has one timeout, but they don't burn it. Playing defense here, so Mississippi State's going to go deep on this look. And they get a look. Goes into Moore. Moore just can't, he can't handle the pass. You'll see here, he's he's going up to take a shot. He just loses the ball. So, Mississippi State decides not to foul, and that one ends with Kentucky sneaking out of Mississippi State on the road, picking up a win. All right, we're going to transition over to the Big Ten for this next matchup. Big Ten's a weird conference this year. A lot of people might be discounting it a little bit too much. Uh, coming into this one, Northwestern, Indiana, Iowa, and Maryland were all tied for second place, and they were each a game ahead of Illinois, Michigan State, and Rutgers. And all seven of those teams have a chance to make the tournament, and Purdue, who was at the top of the conference, is obviously going to be in. So Indiana was the two-and-a-half-point favorite coming into this one. The over-under was 134 and Northwestern was plus 123 to win it. Indiana shoots it well from behind the line. They're at 38% from the free throw line. They shoot it at 71%. They average 12.5 turnovers a game, 15.7 assists per game, and 37 rebounds. Northwestern won this first matchup by one point on January 8th, and they were up 21 in this game. Indiana has now closed it to five points here with three minutes to play. And Northwestern, they do not shoot it as well from behind the line. They kind of play a slower, more controlled um higher quality possessions type of basketball. They only shoot at 31% from behind the line. They're up to 75% from the free throw line. They average only 10 turnovers per game, only 13 assists, and grab 35 boards. Like I said, they won the previous matchup, and entering this game, they had a four-game win streak. This is a team that played a one-point game versus Auburn back in December, and they got some good senior leadership. They lost uh, Larry Pete Nance Jr. to tra the transfer portal. He went to UNC with... Pete Nance on this roster, this team would be scary good. But right now, they're trying to hold on to this lead. On this first possession, we get Trace Jackson Davis and Jalen Hood Shafino, who just go two man game, and you're not you're not stopping Jalen or I'm sorry, uh, Trace Jackson Davis in the lane like that. There's only one man in the conference that can stop Trace Jackson Davis that close to the rim, um, going off two feet and elevating like that. And that's Zach Eady. Zach Eady's the only guy who's going to be able to put up a stop against Jackson Davis all the way down there. So we get Nicholson on the foul call right here, 34. He gets into him. Jackson Davis goes off two feet. He goes up strong. He goes into the defender. He shoots it. He shoots it into the defender. And he absorbs the contact while still finishing his shot. So Indiana with a chance to cut the one possession, or it is one possession, two-point game now. And Northwestern's looking a little out of pace. They're on their heels. Um... This possession, the ball gets sticky again, like I said uh, in the previous matchup. It gets sticky, and the timing and the spacing are just off. So Aduje, number one, is coming off, but we just don't like what we got. So coach calls timeout. On this inbound, though, Boo Bowie gets deep on this dribble drive. He, got, he draws two defenders, so that means someone's open uh, on the line. So we got Brooks Barnheiser right here, number 13. He's the guy that's open on the wing. But um, number 10 down here on the block, Titus Verhoeven, is keeping good position on Race Thompson down here down low. And Bowie sees him, and he gives him a little bounce pass feed. And Verhoeven uses the pump fake to get the defense uh, off balance. He gets Thompson up in the air, and you can see Trace Jackson Davis is coming over for the block. But the pump fake gets him off balance, and he's late getting there. And Verhoeven is able to get it in. Indiana's going to put the ball in Trace Jackson Davis's hands, number 23 right here. We're going to get a clear out with Race Thompson, and then we're just trying to get it into 23, the entire possession. Uh, it goes into Jalen hood Shafino right here, and Jackson Davis is able to get a post up on Verhoeven. He just turns, spins, and shoots it. Man, I mean, this is a great shot. He's He gets up, and he's still looking to make a pass in the air. He turns his body and puts up a shot with his left and gets it to go. So again, for this Northwestern possession, ball just gets a little sticky. They don't um, get too many passes. They don't get a good look at the rim. No dribble drive action. It's just one pass to Aduje and a step back three. 
Goes off the front rim. Gets tipped out, but, you know, Verhoeven might have been able to grab this thing on the rebound. But he tips it out, and uh, Miller Cop, number 12 in red, is able to grab hold of it. Hood Shafino's got it now, and we're going to get it to Galloway. Looking for Davis down low. He's down here on the, on the one side of the court. Dang, I mean, definitely not definitely not the look. Hutchfino goes for the lob, but it's way too high. Davis is is he's open. That's well developed, well timed. Just I don't know where uh <laughs> Jalen Hutchfino's throwing this ball. He thinks he's throwing it to Yao Ming up there or something. It's well timed. It's just uh they get it right into Hutchfino. And as soon as Thompson clears, they get it into Hood Shafino, and then it's just a backdoor look for Jackson Davis, but the lob just ain't there. So Northwestern comes away with it up to chance to go by two possessions. They want to take the air out of the ball now, waste as much time as they can. Ball's running through Boo Booey. So he's got Miller Cop, the 6'7 senior, 215 pounds. Boo Booey down here, he's 6'1, about buck 80, and he just uses that size advantage to go right at Miller Cop. And then once he gets in the paint down here, he pulls some Steph Curry. That's a Steph Curry look right there. It's a hell of a layup over Trace Jackson Davis, high off the glass. Steph Curry-esque is what I suppose you could call it. So Huchafino on this possession is just a pick and roll with Trace Jackson Davis. You'll see the action occur right here. And he's got his man beat. Uh, Verhoeven is hedging hard because he, he sees how beat his, uh, his guy is. And... Uh, as soon as Verhoeven gets back to Trace Jackson Davis, Hood Shafino is able to put his defender on his hip, and he's going up to shoot it. Off two feet, just taking what he's given. Good patience. Put an extra dribble on the court. Just make sure you get a good look. So we got an inbound, and Indiana's got the press up. We got a quick foul. So we'll see Miller Cop. His six, seven long arms are going to come into play on this position. He reaches all the way around and gets that tip. Right to Jackson Davis. And they tie the ball game up. Coming back down from 21. They tie it up late. 30 seconds to go. Shot clock and game clock are pretty much right on time. And uh, both teams got one timeout. But Boo Boo is just going to say, let's go one-on-one -on -one with Galloway right here. It's going to be individual defensive possessions. Like I said in previous videos, individual defensive possessions are going to win games. Late in March. Close games, late in March, is going to come down to what a guy can do when he's guarding the man across from him. So, Boo Booey on this possession, he challenges Galloway, crosses him over, and gets him beat. He's got, he's got him on his hip, and I don't know. If that's not an offensive foul shove-off, I don't really know what is. To me, this is the textbook definition of an offensive foul. And in a game where that is the deciding call, I feel like that call has to be made. Hutchfino goes off the front rim to end it. And we'll just take a look at that one more time from Boo Booey's game winner. Um, Galloway, again, got him beat, got him on his hip. But you can see that off arm, just how much separation is created. Um, it's not like he stops on a dime. He's, his momentum is still going forward. And once he sees the separation, he knows to put up the shot. And he gets it to go. So it's a good shot. Hutchfino gets a clean look. From midcourt, and it goes right off the front rim. Almost a game winner there um, from midcourt. But, yeah, crazy game there in Northwestern. A big reason, like I've, like I've said, that I wanted to start the series is because as March comes around, there's going to be a lot of hype around the close games in March. But don't let that sort of, like, fool you away from watching these close games here late in February. These are these teams are playing their asses off because they know this is where their season is make or break for a lot of them. Um so, yeah, stay tuned. We're going to keep watching uh, games from these higher-level higher level teams. Hopefully, uh, we'll get some close, like, Mountain West Conference games or take a look at some bubble teams that may or may not be there um, towards the end. The Conference Championship Week is coming up soon, so those are going to be crazy games. Maybe have a Conference Championship special episode. Um, but this was episode 10, so first milestone. I appreciate y'all uh, being here with me for it. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned for more.